there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. <laughs> Saturday, Chatterday. Oh, it's actually 4.03 Friday afternoon when I'm recording this. I can't move because I have so much junk. Oh, it's not really junk, it's good art stuff, but so much stuff at my feet and on my table. There's like, <laughs> get up with the camera just so, so you don't see what a hot mess this room is. Um, but it's, uh, it's, wow, it's been a, been a, a uh, busy week. I just finished filming and editing the my 2021 holiday gift guide. I wanted to get that out. Actually, oh my word, my to-do list. This week I keep thinking all these things I want to do every day and if I get a third of them done, I'm doing good because I've just, I'm just excited about too many projects, I guess. So this morning I was like, I really want to get a holiday gift guide done because a few people have asked me for it and it's kind of nice because, um, you know, just offhand, people ask me, what do you, what do you recommend? What do you recommend? And then a, a woman in my community reached out to me and she's like, I want to get my daughter some markers and watercolors and things like that. What do you recommend? And, um, and it was funny because I had a notebook going. I was, had just been like, um, kind of like penciling out my holiday gift guide and what I would recommend. But then I have to go online and make sure these things are still available and they're still a reasonable price because sometimes things come out at a low price and then the price, you know, goes way higher after I review them. I'm not saying that it's my fault or my reason, but um, you know, sometimes the prices go way up and then it's not necessarily the value that it was. If something was $30 and I thought it was great, well, if it's $60, it might not still be that great because you're paying twice as much, you know what I mean? So I go with my list and I go and check and make sure that, that the prices are still reasonable and the things are available. So if people are trying to shop for their loved ones and artists, then they can find um, what they're looking for. And also because a video like this might appeal to like spouses of artists and parents of artists and not necessarily, you know, they might not, you know, I want to be very specific with my linking because um, people just don't know and they don't know what to expect to pay for things. And I just don't want to see people getting taken advantage of, you know, especially where like I'll go onto Amazon and I will search like Windsor Newton watercolor palette, you know, looking for Windsor Newton watercolors. And then like most of everything that comes up is not what I searched for. And if you didn't know, then you could so easily get the wrong thing. Um, so, so I've been working on that today and all that stuff is out. So I went and found examples. Of course, it's probably not that enticing because instead of showing like brand new glossy products, all my stuff is used and janky looking, but uh, hopefully people get the idea. Then again, if it's used and janky looking, that means it's worth buying because it's used because I used it, you know? Uh, Anyway, I certainly have enough things that haven't been used that much. But, uh, oh, I wanted to remind you, holidays and all, um, that the special on my hand-painted holiday course is going to the end of the month. And um, I will put a link that has a coupon code attached in the video description and the coupon code typed out in case you have any issues. And honestly, I don't trust myself to remember what it is right now. <laughs> Otherwise, I would say it. But um, you can get 50, 50, F, F, O, Lordy, 5, 50 percent off of that class uh, through the end of the month. And I just added four new cards and three new tags to that project, to that full curriculum. So uh, lots of good stuff in there to get you crafting for the holidays, a lot of quick projects and uh, give you give yourself a little crafty break when you're busy with all the holiday stuff. I really haven't got that much done for Christmas yet. I went to a craft fair last weekend and I went to Freeport too. Um, it was uh, Saturday, actually Saturday, we were doing yard work and stuff and, and I was just kind of like hanging around. It's like, just I haven't visited my family in a while. So my, my parents and sister and, um, and whatnot. And so I texted my sister to ask what she was up to Sunday, thinking I'd take a drive down. And she's like, oh, actually, we're going to a craft fair and to Freeport to do some Christmas shopping. You want to go? I'm like, sure. So I headed down there first thing in the morning and um, went to a craft fair at the Augusta Civic Center. And um, it was really slow. So it was kind of nice for shopping. I guess it was busy the day before. Um, and I got uh, I got a few presents. I didn't get too much, but I did. Oh, my word. I got that most delicious Pickled onions. This might sound really gross, but oh my word. I've never, I don't think I've ever had pickled onions before and I put them on a veggie burger yesterday and they were so good. They were like, um, they must've been pickled red onions because the um, the juice was like red and there was like, it had mustard seed in it and it was just like tangy and a little bit sweet, but mostly sour and crunchy. Oh, it was so good. And I also got some sour mustard pickles and I got dilly beans. Cause believe it or not, I've never had dilly beans in my life. I haven't tried those yet, but um, and then I just got a few little uh, little gifts for family, um, not too much. And then we went to Freeport, and um, we didn't spend too much time in Freeport. But I was surprised they have um, they have free parking, like a free parking garage. I was really surprised because I always think of Freeport as kind of a tourist trap. But 
Um, but I would definitely go back because I, I always think of it as being like a really crazy busy place and those are the type of places I avoid, especially when my kids were little and then just, you just get out of the habit of going to places like that. So um, we ended up in two different candy shops where I bought some presents and uh, a bookstore where I actually bought, oh, you know what? Oh shoot, what did I do with that bag? Uh, oh, right here. Oh, I can show you. Um, I did buy a couple things for myself because I'm horrible, a horrible person. Um, I got myself, um, I've wanted to try black wing pencils for the longest time and uh, I splurged and I'm telling you, it was a splurge. It's $25 for 12 pencils. You see them in there and they had, they had black ones, matte black ones, pearl white ones, natural um, there might have been one other kind, but they all have, but I thought they were all the same, but I, but then I started reading the boxes and these are the soft ones and then the white ones are balanced and the natural ones might be firm and there's another one that's like extra firm or something. So I went with the soft ones because I like a soft pencil and this is like, I've been using it. It's actually really nice. It's very, uh, you can control the, uh, the darkness really easily and they just look real nice and they feel really nice in your hands. So that was a splurge. I know, kind of crazy. Um, and, uh, went to, in that bookstore, I got a couple of presents too, which I can't say what they are in case, you know, my daughters are listening. Um, I can't say what any of the presents are that I bought anyway, cause you know, not that I don't think my kids watch my videos, but, uh, cause cringy mom, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, we went to a quilt shop cause I was with my mom and my sister and they both quilt and I don't quilt, but what I, what I found, and these are a dollar a piece and what they are, are like, they're just scraps. They're like off cuts. I know you probably think you probably, any of you quilters are like, you seriously bought those. But they're like a little ribbon. They look like little ribbons. They're offcuts of um, like different batiks and pretty fabrics and stuff. And when I sew, I usually don't have too many scraps because I do stuff that will like use up a fat quarter. Um, unless I'm unless I bought some material to make a garment with. But then that's just one pattern. I don't have this variety. So I was thinking these might be fun to use on cards. They were. Um, they had a bunch of these and they were all a dollar a bag and they would use, they were using them to do like these um like wall hanging these like small wall hanging mosaics so i think they put like fusible web down and then they uh, like arrange their things like mosaics and then press them i think i think that's what they did that's what it looked like anyway but i thought these would be really cute um on some cards so stay tuned i really wanted to get a card video done this week um because i oh i can show you i oh this is crazy i showed when i did the uh the artify enhanced marker unboxing i had stamped out a bunch of these little deer and i um uh, and I colored a couple of them on camera and then so I colored the rest of them I was just kind of playing with them. I don't know if you probably can't really maybe you can see that Let me turn that down a little bit. Does that help? I don't know um, So these were these old stamps from pink persimmon that I got quite a few years ago um, The company went out of business a few years ago, but anyway, they're so cute And I wanted to kind of like a vintage looking Christmas card and I really wanted to get that done today But anyways, I stamped all those on one sheet of cardstock and my scan and cut first try, cut them all out. I was so impressed and so excited for that. <clears throat> because, you know, so, you know, a lot of times you have to scan it and you cut whatever will will give you a clean line. Then you like sometimes have to rescan it or adjust your thresholds and stuff like that. But it was like perfect to cut every single one. I actually, I couldn't believe it. I filmed like a little um, Instagram story story. Yeah. The one that disappears after 24 hours. I'm like, you gotta see this. <laughs> I was so impressed with that. I got that machine about five years ago on Black Friday. I paid $250 for it. And that thing has really served me well. And it's funny. A lot of people lately have asked me about buying a scan and cut. And it's like, I can't tell you the difference between any of the models because that's the only one I've ever used. Um, and it does everything I need it to do. So I haven't looked at replacing it or getting anything different. So I think they still make them. It was the, and I know because somebody will ask, it's the Scan and Cut 2 model CM350. So it's, um, and it's one that like you could buy on Amazon or the craft stores. I bought mine uh, on joanne.com. Uh, and it was two fifty. Home Shopping also had some good deals on it. I don't know about now. I have seen them on Amazon. I don't know if any of the craft stores are still carrying that model because I'm sure it's like, you know, 10 models ago, but it's still working great for me. And it doesn't, it's not too bad on the blades. So that's also a nice thing that, and I'm still on my first mat. I do restick it sometimes with some quilters ba basting spray. But other than that, uh, I'm still on the first mat. You just have to be careful that you don't cut through the mat, which I think a lot of people have done. And I guess you can put duct tape on the back if that happens. But um, I'm really happy with it. Uh, oh, where's mine? Oh, 
Guys, did you happen to catch my watercolor video this week? I did a live stream of these little um, these little miniatures. I just think they're so cute. They're these little, um, I'm gonna turn that down. Let's see if that, oh, blinded for a second there. Um, I just did these little, uh, these little, I did a couple birch tree ones. Little miniatures. They weren't all done on camera because I did some practicing first. I wanted to make sure that it was going to it was going to work out and be as cool as I it was in my head before I got started. Um, and I have photos of these on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com, um, along with swatches of the paints that I used and their pigment makeup and all of that jazz. But that was just sky, like clouds and stuff. Um, but it was just fun to work in like little circles. I just drew circles on a page and it was it was really kind of fun. Um, and then I cut after I cut those out, there were scraps left of my paper. So I'm like, well, I'm going to take those scraps and paint on them. And I'm thinking, man, I wish I had a craft fair to go to this year because I think these would be gold. Sell these as bookmarks or something. I think those would really sell well, even though they're so simple. I just think like it's kind of fun. Um, but anyway, that was fun. And I want to do more little miniature things because I just I don't know what it is about it. I really enjoyed it. And uh, that live stream is up for you to watch. It's a live stream and a couple times I took questions, but I give you a warning. So if you don't want to hear the chitter chatter, then you can just, um, you know, jump ahead because some people complain about that and I can understand. But um, yeah, so we did that. Uh, oh, speaking of craft fairs, we uh, we are having a surge in Maine. And this especially this area of Maine, the northern Maine area, right? Well, a lot of people consider Bangor northern Maine, even though it's kind of in the middle of the state. But anyway, this area, northern Bangor and north. Um, and so a lot of the craft fairs have gotten canceled and a friend of mine was uh, was saying that it was fine. She gets ready for this one big craft fair. She does a couple, but one is their best one and she gets ready for it all year. And um, all the people that were exhibiting paid and then the organizers just canceled five days before it was supposed to happen. Um, and I guess it was taken over by a new outfit. So I don't know what what's going on there. I hope they all get their table fees back. But then um, at my daughter's high school, they have a really big craft fair that like people are on waiting lists for years to get a table like that popular and they canceled it. And I was like, wow, um, I understand because they were in school. I could understand, you know, it being open to the public and stuff, but uh, like not wanting it open to the public. The other place was in an auditorium, uh, like a, a town auditorium. So that was I was like, wow. And then um, I got a couple advertisements for craft fairs in the mail and I was thinking, oh, that might be fun to do this weekend or whenever it was. And they're usually at like, uh, on like college campuses around here. And the only ones that were coming that I was getting in the mail were like for Portland and stuff. And it's like, wow, are there like no craft fairs up here? I guess it was a big one at the mall, um, the Bangor Mall a couple weekends ago, but I just thought there'd be a bunch more. So I didn't even like consider going really. Cause I'm like, ah, that's Christmas is months away. Um, but I guess I probably should have which is actually a pretty good use of the mall because the mall has been just dying for the past like 10 years or so and so much vacancy. So that's a great thing to do in a, in a mall that's getting vacant because there's plenty of parking. I mean, you've got to dodge some serious potholes at that parking lot, but, um, but yeah, it's kind of a shame that, uh, uh, I mean, it's a great way to, great way to use it. It's a shame that these other ones are being canceled. I mean, safety obviously is more important, but um, uh, it's just, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Every, uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, <laughs> lest I let some personal views spill out on the internet and I get canceled. Um, we don't need that. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm going to be teaching my first class in person since before the pandemic. I'll be teaching a class at the local library um, doing painting on mason jars. I stopped at the library last night to pick up the, because they got a big donation of like canning jars, mason canning jars. And the librarian asked if I could do a some sort of class on that. So I have an idea. I think I'm going to, um, and I'll do a video of it if I might as well. I mean, I'll try to keep it short. Um, but my idea is to kind of like glitter the top of them, like clear glitter. And then, um, they'll be a wreath or a vine or something around the bottom. Cause I mean, coming to this class, it's people of all age, um, all age and experience levels. And then, um, the idea is to put the, put like those little led fairy lights on the inside. So you have a luminary and I want it to be kind of classy looking. I don't want it to be kind I don't want it to be tacky looking. So, um, and something like that, I think can be very seasonal from like, uh, something like that could go fall through winter and be pretty, uh, so that's what I'm planning to do. I'm using, I'm going to use my folk art enamel. So I have those out there on my table, actually ready to go. Of course, I have no room to work because of all the things that I have scattered around. Um, but 
yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, I mean, I'm sure I'll have to wear a mask. I hope I can be loud enough through my mask to instruct. But uh, that's and that's that's going to be weird. Um, like I mentioned, did I mention? Oh my gosh, I don't even think I mentioned it. I don't know if I knew last week. Um, so Heirloom Productions, the company that does the stamp shows that I teach at sometimes, um, they're. They didn't have them last year because of the pandemic, and then they did have them this year, but they just um, posted on their website that they're selling off all their shows to different outfits, mostly different stamp companies that live near where the locations are. So I don't know how those shows are going to be. Um, that I guess, yeah, I guess it's, it's an effective, effective next year, maybe effective in January, maybe, um, which I was thinking I probably wouldn't go. Yeah, I don't think I'll be going... I would have been going next year anyway because my girls will be graduating. And I don't know if they're graduating the weekend of the stamp show or the weekend following. I guess if it was the weekend before, I might. But still, that's going to be a busy time. And um, uh, I don't want to pile too much on my plate. I certainly, I don't think I'd want to try to be teaching. Uh, but then again, if I go, then I kind of want to teach because, you know, it's a long trip. And, I, you know, especially as the vendors get fewer and fewer every year um, to make the, the trip kind of worthwhile. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, gee, I think I, did I get through all this? Um, oh, I did have some people asking me if I knew about any Black Friday, uh, crafty deals or an art supply deals, and I really haven't seen much. I bet most, like, stores will have some sort of specials going on. And what I would do is I would just recommend signing up for newsletters from companies and stores that you like, that you'd want to purchase products from and seeing, you know, if they advertise any, any deals. I saw Rubbernecker Stamps, actually, um, is they sent out an email today saying tomorrow their Black Friday week sale starts. So um, uh, I will put a link. I wonder if they have a link to that. I'm going to check my email. Hopefully I still have the email in there because um, sometimes there'll be like a link to either their newsletter or a link to like a sale page because that's start well that'll start today if you're watching sat chat on saturday that would start today robert necker has some really nice stamps i've never used their dyes but i really like their stamps um and derwent has 30 percent off their website i don't know how for how long though and i noticed that um like jerry's artorama because i just ordered a couple um white ink tense blocks because I was like, I just have a little nub left <laughs> of my white one. So I ordered three and they were on sale for $1.90 each there. Um, generally, I think when, when like Derwent does their sales, and I think this is true for most manufacturers, when they do their big sales, they also, it also authorizes any of their vendors to do sales as well. So you probably would find Derwent products on sale at any of your, your, your favorite places like Blick, Jerry's, stuff like that, maybe Cheap Joe's, Amazon. Um, but other than that, I think that, you know, you just want to subscribe to the, the stores, you know, subscribe to newsletters from brands and stores you like and see what gets advertised or just kind of hunt around. When I did the gift guide, and I think when you're watching this, it might be up because I was thinking that uh, it would be a good idea to get up sooner rather than later. So if people are trying to beat the rush, um, because I don't think there's going to be a lot of huge sales this year. I think with like all the boats stuck off the coast, um... I think that it's going to be, yeah, I think stock might be kind of low, so I don't think stores are really going to want to, you know, move it all that fast and then be out. Um, but, you know, you never know. The stuff, I, the stuff I put in the gift guide and I linked to, nothing had gone up crazy. So things seem pretty fair and reasonable. And um, Or if it didn't, I didn't link to it because I'm like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to serve you guys to the wolves. So eh, there's... There's that. I don't know what I'm up to this weekend. I've got to figure out if I want to. I had this. I had this. I've had so many delusions of grandeur this week. I thought today I would record a podcast. I would get my next critique club lesson recorded. Record my sketchbook Sunday. Record a gift guide and record Sat Chat. And uh, what have I done? I've recorded the gift guide. <laughs> and edited it and I've recorded sat chat and technically I've still got eight more minutes of sat chat left I haven't actually completed that yet um but man yeah the gift guide took took a long time to to check everything and pull everything together and then get the physical products together so I could show them on screen but um yeah and I was thinking oh for Thanksgiving I think I'll start another I'll grow another sourdough starter and then do sourdough rolls and yeah that hasn't happened and that's not going to happen I don't think I'm gonna make cranberry sauce and I'm gonna cook a tofurkey to bring down to my sister's house for Thanksgiving her husband loves to cook um they're going to do uh they they like to they prefer chicken to turkey so they're gonna do a couple chickens and uh, for the meat eaters and my mom's gonna make 
um, her famous mashed potatoes because everyone loves her famous mashed potatoes and um, I think they actually usually have rolls that they bought at the store so I don't know if I'll make rolls um, I make a lot of bread I might I don't know we'll see we'll see I haven't um I feel like I've just been behind all week um, do you ever feel like that like you're just just way <laughs> You're just way behind and you have way more ideas than you can uh, than you can possibly do in a day. I guess that's better than having no ideas. It's better than the bucket being completely empty. Um, I think it's daily savings time because it's like, you know, it's 4.23 and it feels like 6 o'clock. And then I know when I go upstairs, it's going to be dark outside. At least I get outside a couple times during the day walking the dog, which is good. Um, good for both of us, but it's, uh, it's kind of weird. Um... Oh, and another big piece of news. I didn't want to lead with this because it's kind of like, it's kind of weird because I kind of, like, I'm excited. This is good news. This is happy news. But I also feel a little bit like I have failed or um, or something. My husband is has, is back on the air, back on uh, radio full time. An amazing opportunity came up and he interviewed for it and got the job. And, um, and I'm super happy for him and it's wonderful. And, you know... Super excited for good health insurance, but other than that, you know, it's it's really good. But he used to do all my editing and a lot of other random things that I would ask him to do for the business for like the last three years. And um, I think that's probably a little bit why I'm behind because it's like, oh crap, I gotta do this now. I can't just say, oh, can you scan this? Can you, you know, put this on the computer? Can you slap these pieces together? And you know, so it's um, it's uh, it's different. It's it's uh a lot of little things that take up time that, you know, you might not have realized before. So, um, so it's a good positive change, but, um, there might be fewer videos on the channel. Probably more live streams though, because I don't have to edit those. I was thinking that I would live stream the, the deer card video because with that, where I'm making like eight cards, um, I'll have a few made ahead of time and then I'll have everything laid out so I could actually do that pretty efficiently. Um, and it might be kind of fun to do like a craft along live stream type thing. I'll have a craft along next week on the um, craft stash Facebook page because the the um, the box, the subscription box that I designed for Paper Craft Society is launching next week. I think it should be shipped. It'll be shipped by the end of next week, I believe. So that's going to be super exciting. Um, I haven't got permission to share the projects I made yet. So maybe next week. It should be by next week because next week it should be shipped out. Or maybe that has to wait till it gets to everybody. I don't know. I don't know the rules. Uh, that's why it's so much easier to just do your own thing because you don't have to follow anybody else's rules. But that was fun. I really like how that box came out. I don't think I'll ever design another one because that was so much work. Oh, my word. I don't think I have enough ideas in me to do another box because I put them all in that box. All the good ideas, they're already there. I don't have any more. And I can't, not designing any more dies or stamps because those are all my good ideas. I am done. <laughs> So if you get the box, then you get the best. You get the best of it. Unless I have some burst of um, stamping creativity, which uh, I highly doubt that will happen because I've been trying to make some Christmas cards for a couple of weeks and it hasn't happened yet. Um, I don't know. I guess you have to kind of niche, 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 niche down at some point because otherwise you just go in too many directions. I feel like I go in so many directions. But I only do that because I enjoy those different directions and I enjoy experimenting and exploring. And I think that's a good thing. So let me look. What else do we have to talk about? Uh, oh my goodness. Well, I've got some other good news too. Um, so the girls have been applying to colleges, applying to a few of their uh, most important colleges for not early decision, because that's binding, but early, um, what do they call it? Early, early admission, early something early application. I can't remember, but it's not the binding one. It's the other one. And um, Maisie's heard back from two schools and they've offered her generous merit scholarships and Lila's heard back from one school and she's also been offered a generous merit scholarship. So I am really proud of my girls and excited and all that hard work is paying off. I was kind of like, um, like dubious because I'm like, does scholarships even exist anymore? You know, it's like you always hear about that, but it seems like some mythical thing that like, you know, study hard, get a scholarship. I'm like, does that really happen? Is that like just imaginary, you know? So, uh, so that's really exciting. I'm really, um, I'm really happy for that because some of the prices for the, you see the full price in some of those places and it will give you a heart attack. So that is very good, very good news. I mean, and it's also cool to be accepted from places. You don't have choices. And um, taking it from, from somebody who never took the SAT and only applied to one school, 
<laughs> and didn't really have much, much, uh, I don't know, didn't really put that much thought into her future plans. I think that's awesome. They're, they're definitely starting off on a much more stable ground than, than I did. I mean, I turned out okay, but still. It's kind of, it's kind of funny to see, you know, what kids that apply themselves can do. <laughs> but I'm wicked proud of them. They are, uh, they are doing well. And it's going by fast. It's going so fast. I can't believe it. I can't believe a year from now, guys, if we're still doing Satch ads, I'll be crying and you'll be picking me off the floor, picking me up off the floor because I'll be in an empty nest all by my own lonesome with a dog that will run off on me in a second. Oh, this week. So here's another time suck. I had to chase my dog down. She, I, when I hooked her to take her for a walk one of the days this week, um, apparently I didn't hook her on her, like the, the, the loop on her collar. I hooked her to the keychain, the key ring that has her like rabies um, tags and stuff like that, like the, um, you know, the if lost call, you know, tag. And we were almost home and she saw some crows. And she usually doesn't bother crows too much, but for whatever reason, she just bolted and the tag, like the key ring that, um, and granted I should have had it hooked on the strong one on the collar, but I wish I wasn't paying attention when I hooked her up, snapped or just like bent wide open and she was gone like a rocket. Thank God she had her, uh, I had her like or blaze orange um, safety vest on um, because she took off and she did not stop running for 45 minutes. I swear every once in a while it's here, pop out of the woods and I'd go to call her at a bag of treats, so shaking a bag of treats and she'd stop, look at me and Bam, right back in the woods. And this was that for, it kept doing that for like 45 minutes. And then she finally went to a neighbor's house who has a dog. And so she texted me. And so I went over there. And as soon as I got close to her, bam, off again. And she didn't come to me until I was like talking to that neighbor. And we were just uh, like standing by the road talking. And they had her, she had her dog on a leash getting ready to go for a walk. Then Penny came to me. And, um, which is probably not the greatest way to, to do this, but I hooked her up and then we went on a walk with my neighbor and her dog, which was probably just giving her a big old treat for being a naughty little poop head. And I did not say poop. I said the real word and I was that mad. And yeah, so she just said, but then when we got home and I filled up the bathtub and she knew that game, fun and game time was over, um, Hopefully she connected the, the muddy romp in the woods to needing to have a bath. But of course, I couldn't get her into that tub by myself because I was home by myself. And uh, I tried a couple times and I'm like, I'm going to destroy my back or she's going to get hurt or something. So I ended up having to give her a sponge bath on the bathroom floor because I couldn't get her into the tub. <sighs> what a way to start the week. I think that was Monday. That was my first Monday with my husband going back to work. <laughs> And so then, um, and I wanted to catch the beginning of his show because he goes on the air at 10. And so it was like 10, 15 by the time I got back from this ordeal. And I sounded great. It sounded like he didn't even miss a beat. Like he hasn't been off the air for three years. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I can't imagine taking a hiatus like that and then like popping on to YouTube and, and doing my thing. I don't know. Uh, I think that would be, that would be hard. But, um, so yeah, good, good, big changes, good changes, maybe a few less videos, but probably more live streams. Just bear with me guys. And I'm going to do my best going to do my best to keep it fun and, uh, and inspiring. So there you have it. Thanks so much for watching and being part of the Frugal Crafter family. I appreciate it. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.